Good morning. Let us continue our celebration by calling upon God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pause for a moment and consider how we stand before God and one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, fear the Lord your God and and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them 
that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath which was taken after the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied and said, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second commandment is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, Jesus said. The scribe looked at Jesus and said, well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is the one and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with such understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. (laughs) Several years ago, as many of you may recall, there was a rather cute commercial on television that involved two grade school boys. One of the boys was from America and the other from Asia, and they were linked by computers. They're locked eye to eye in a game called Who Will Blink First? Their respective classmates are cheering them on, encouraging them as if if this were an Olympic game. And then it happened. The boy from America blinked. Cheers are heard from Asia as the boy's classmates shout with joy. Our young American boy blinked first. That's all. But as every school child knows on whatever continent, whoever blinks first, loses. There are grown-up versions of this game also, but these games are much more dangerous, much more senseless, much more damaging, much more, if I could say from the pulpit, much more stupid. Two young men playing a deadly and foolish game with their cars called chicken. They quite stupidly drive toward each other at high speeds to see which one will veer off the road first. The one who turns the wheel is called Chicken, a name no self-respecting thug wants to wear. There's another version of this grown-up game. Someone has been wronged, someone's feeling hurt, trust has been betrayed, And now two people are estranged, separated by the gulf of unforgiven sin. It could be two friends caught up in a quarrel. It could be a couple trapped in the silence of a cold marriage. Former business partners who have parted ways over some disagreement that they might not even recall the details of at this point. So how can we close this gap? How can two estranged people become reconciled again? If you ask the person who feels wrong, they will almost certainly say something like this. I could forgive them if they would admit admit their fault first. Ask for my forgiveness. Repay me for the wrong that they have done. But this is the question of the day. Is forgiveness only possible when the offending party blinks first? 
Is reconciliation granted only when it's earned? After all debts have been paid, after the wrongdoer has sufficiently suffered and groveled. In other words, must there be repentance before there can be forgiveness? For many of us, the obvious answer to this question is yes, especially if we happen to be Sicilian. (laughs) But God offers a different answer. According to our scriptures, God offers a radical reversal to the repentance and forgiveness sequence. Scripture suggests that the path to reconciliation is for the offended party to make the first move, to offer forgiveness even before the offending party has asked for it, much less deserves it. It sounds crazy, I know. I myself have difficulty doing that from time to time. But the very brave and bold grace of that unmerited offer may not only get the wrongdoer's attention, it may provoke the repentance needed for the reconciliation to be complete. It's a bold move. It's indeed a brave mood. A unilateral disarmament God asks the offended person to make. But it's a new game God wants us to learn. A game where the person who blinks first and the person who blinks last can both win. Because the point of this game is not winning over a competitor, but winning back a companion. What God is asking is that we try a new order of things. If you are someone who sits there nursing your wounds, if you are someone who sits there rehearsing the story of how you have been wronged, if you're sitting there waiting on the offending party to make the first move because justice demands it, you may be waiting a long time. The person who offended you may not even know the depth of your pain. The person may not be totally, may be totally unsure as to how to make the first move because they feel so guilty. Or perhaps they're so unsure how you would react if they approached you. So why don't you make the first move? Remember the wisdom of Francis de Sales who wrote, repentance does not create forgiveness. It is forgiveness that creates repentance. Once again, repentance does not create forgiveness It is forgiveness that creates repentance. So go ahead and fly in the face of fairness and justice and do something so radical it might thaw that ice pack that's formed between you and the person you long to know. Yes, go ahead and just blink. May God bless you in your efforts as he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard God's word and having reflected upon what that means in our lives, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pause now as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and all parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. For all missionaries who serve our church, that the Holy Spirit will empower them to draw all to the love of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children and teachers in school, especially at St. Agnes, that they will be safe from all harm and strive to do their best, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Gaudet, and for Ann Whalen and Carolyn Jones, postulants with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray for, to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For living and deceased parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we come before you this morning with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we offer, those which we have spoken aloud, and those which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask you in the Lord's name, amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure pardon, and for us, holy outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ with faith in your love and mercy, and your body and death, the blood and not bring the condemnation, but help the mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
just a few announcements now. St. Francis de Sales said that Mass should be at least one hour. So, I've got 10 minutes for announcements. So our poor box collection this weekend is for Birthright, an organization that helps moms in need have their babies. All teens are invited to youth group on Tuesday for the All Souls Day Mass in the evening here at church, followed by festivities. Monday marks the Feast of All Saints, so we will have Masses in the morning as usual, 6.30 and 9, and then 7 p.m. here in church. Tuesday marks the Feast of All Souls. Masses will be offered at 6.30 and 9 and 7 p.m. in church. Now, the morning Masses are in the parish hall, but the evening Masses will be here. If you'd like to have one of your loved ones remembered in the All Souls Novena, please take a moment to complete one of the envelopes you find near the entrances, and you can give them to an usher, me, or you can drop it by the parish office. St. Joseph's League meets on Thursday at 7.30, so this is our new men's group. We're working through a great program called Into the Breach. So the idea is trying to find a way to build fraternity, some man spirituality, as well as a service organization for our parish. So if you haven't attended before, you're welcome to attend now. The Friday, this Friday, we'll have our traditional Latin Mass at 7. Now an update about the construction. So tomorrow, hopefully, God willing, the big huge truck with steel is going to arrive and they'll start assembling what is needed for the front of the church. And then after that gets done, things should move pretty quickly in the front. You notice that this has been sealed off. So you can go all the way up into the tower now. It's really cool. You get on the little lift and you go sort of like the ascension. You can see all the way out to the Basilica, the Immaculate Conception. So I'm looking for fireworks this coming 4th of July. So it really should be fun. And then you notice they're starting to patch the terrazzo and get ready for polishing. And that's more complicated than I ever thought it would be. Tuesday is election day, so just a brief message from our bishop. He writes, three, these three foundational principles must guide how we vote. Many issues are important. Not all issues have equal moral weight. Protecting life is paramount. As Catholics, we must protect the sacredness of all human life. The right to life is the fundamental right that makes all other rights possible. It must be defended with maximum determination. In the United States, the tragically pervasive acceptance of abortion underscores the urgency of this message. Elected officials in Washington and here in Virginia are working to advance an even more radical abortion-driven agenda. Protecting life to the fullest extent possible is of the utmost importance and must be our highest priority. Now, when you consider it, if the unborn child is considered disposable and not life, what about the rest of us? When do they start saying, you're no longer useful, we can dispose of you? We already see euthanasia, physician-assisted suicide in our country. When will it stop? So keep this in mind. When you go to vote on Tuesday, you do not vote as a Democrat, a Republican, a Libertarian. You vote as a Christian. And you always have to remember that Christ is standing next to you and he's watching how you vote. So keep that in mind. I would suggest that on Monday and Tuesday, you fast and pray. Monday, because the Supreme Court hears a very important case that has tried to use modern day science to limit some of this tragedy. Also, Tuesday, of course, is election day. We see a growing evil in our country. So take some time, say the rosary, some other prayers, make a sacrifice, whatever it is. But we need truly to save our country and our state. May God bless you. Oh, I still have five minutes.
Should I chant a little? No. <laughs> Goodbye. I will take only one of those five minutes. You notice the corral over here? What Father didn't mention is on Tuesday for the youth group, we're going to have a special gathering and we're going to play Lasso the Pastor. <laughs> so come bring your ropes together and we'll take them down together. <laughs> Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.